I'm gonna be building the Thera 75 V2. It's got a nice badge on it. It's a navy blue case, and I think you're all really gonna love it. I haven't built a keyboard in such a long time. Come along for the ride. We're in a new home, new house, new office space. It looks a little bit different. It's actually just uh, a bedroom in the home, so not quite an office, but let's just get started. It's gonna be fun. I don't have any keyboards. I donated them all, pretty much all of them, because I moved. Now I have none, so let's open it up, get it from the closet. Part one. This one's the actual case. So I got the keyboard on the table. And as you can see, I'm sort of trying something new. It's like a vlog keyboard build. It's different. And I know the audio is a little <laughs> jank. Uh, but that's just how it's gonna be for a while. I put up some sound panels here, there. There's even a rug, but there's no furniture. So that doesn't really help with the sound at all. Let's get to building. Are you excited? Are you excited? <laughs> Bam! Let me get that out. Boom. Outside of the plastic. It actually looks really nice. Look at that badge. Mm. And then the backside badge. Mm. So this box is just for the case. And this box is for all the other stuff. This one's much lighter. Ooh, what is this? Oh, yeah. I spent all day yesterday looking for a manual, and it's here inside the build. I've never seen a printed out manual. It's really cute. I like that. So I've got even a carbon fiber PCB mount, stabilizer plate, and a thick, thick foam kit. Wow, that's a lot of foam. And there is a hot swap PCB. Thank goodness there is a hot swap PCB because I didn't want to be soldering anything today. There's some more accessories too. Just unzip them. Type C daughter board cable and screws. Another type C daughter board gaskets. Just the basics. These three things are actually good. Cool. They're different badges. So this one's like a ship steering wheel kind of thing. This is a rotary encoder. It's a lot of effort. I don't know if I'll be using that one. And this one is the case, like the covering to the rotary encoder, if you so choose to use that. The case already has a badge. The case already has this badge, which I think is the coolest one of all. I'm gonna keep that one. And surprisingly, I actually still have stabilizers. I was actually really worried that I wouldn't have stabilizers. I know I have switches and I'm really excited for the switches that I did pick. I think you guys are really, really, really gonna love it because it's a fan favorite in the mechanical keyboard enthusiast space and it's like perfect it's beautiful good looking switches nice sounding switches i hope and then keycaps let's go take a look shall we so this drawer is where all my keyboard stuff used to be and there's not really much in it right now as you can see it's like a barren land here because we have nothing shuffle might look really good in it and we're going with gmk show go for this one now before we get started, I've got toolbox, all the parts, lube, brush, lube. I don't have my iFixit toolkit, so let's go find the iFixit toolkit. Hi Gage, how you doing buddy? I'm going downstairs. iFixit toolkit acquired. Now going back upstairs. This is fun. This house is a lot bigger than what we used to live in, so there's the stairs. Boom, we're ready. Let me pull my chair over there. It's time to work. Got like plenty of instructions, but it doesn't really tell you like when to put the stabilizers on, when to put the switches in or the keycap. I'm actually just going to do that first and then get to building everything else. I believe the case is mostly already built, but I just need to do this stuff and this stuff and this stuff here. Should be easy enough, right? I hope so. I'm not gonna say this, but I'm officially a little bit confused. I'm choosing to use the palm plate because palm is one of my favorites. It's very flexy and I love that. PCB looks great, hot swap, very beautiful. And then I unboxed the foam kit. The foam kit has a lot of foams. It's got the plate foam, the thing that goes underneath the PCB foam, more, more underneath the PCB foam. Wow, who knows what this is kind of foam? And who knows what this is kind of foam? And then these two pieces, and then these like switch foams. So uh, 
Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of foam. Usually I go with everything because that's just how the designer intended to use it. However, in this case, I do not believe that I can use everything and still have it fit inside the case. Therefore, I will do some research and then I'll pick. Also, have I been saying palm this entire time? I mean polycarb. I like polycarb plates because it's very flexy. Very easy to push switches in without hurting your little fingers. All right, after some research, here are the parts of this foam kit. You got bottom case foam, plate foam, PCB foam, a battery cavity foam, 11 millimeter pour on, 12 millimeter pour on. There's just a bunch of stuff. I'll link it down below in the description so you can see everything that's included in the kit. It's a lot of foam. And there's even an image on where to put your foam. So just gonna follow that for the easy, easy peasy. Okay, I took the top case from the bottom case. I used my iFixer toolkit, but the kit does come with a wrench that you can use. Now I can put in the daughter board with the two screws included. Look how flimsy this thing is. Woo! Gotta be careful with that. So you just have to make sure that the hole lines up. The USB-C port lines up with the other port and then screw it down. And then this attaches to the PCB. It looks fragile, that's for sure. I'm just not really gonna take it out or put it in. They gave me an extra one just in case if it broke. I guess they know me really well. The fact that I could break it. Two little tiny screws here. And someone's doing some construction outside, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. Look at the guide just to be sure. Wow, they're doing a lot of construction. So step three, screw in type C daughter board, put three millimeter foam into battery room. Cool, screw that in. And now battery, one there. Since I'm not using the Bluetooth functionality, I'm just gonna fill the battery room with this foam and that way you don't get noise echoing where the battery should be. Next step, next step is to put pour on foam, case foam in as necessary. There's two options here. There's a thin version and then there's a thick version. This is one millimeter pour on. This is two millimeter pour on. The battery room is three millimeter pour on. I'm going to go with the thick one. I'm not sure why there's a circle on the far end. Boom, foam selected. This one's going into the unused pile. So pour on foams as needed. And then there's another one that goes on top of this one, but below the PCB. And that is this one, the one with all the little tiny holes. It's amazing how much foam there is in these kits nowadays. Back in my day, you know, they didn't have this much foam. So now I choose the plate and foam and then put in stabilizers, keycaps, and switches. This thing has lasted me forever. Probably should get another mouse pad here because I actually like my LG G Saturn. Don't really want to mess it up. Even though this isn't the desk that I typically use for gaming anyways, but I like this mouse pad. I don't have any more desk mats because I got rid of them. Boop. Hopefully I don't do this the wrong way because I always am messing up. So this pace of looking at keyboards, building keyboard stuff has been sort of fun. You know, like once a month I get to build something that I'm pretty excited about instead of once a week, which is, it gets less exciting, you know? when you have that many keyboards. Um, but yeah, I'm actually excited about it because I don't build keyboards often. This is the messiest part of the process. So I'm opting not to use the PE foam. I think I'm tired of it. I am leaving this piece out. All right, that's one done. You'll see them all when I'm finished. This process is quite time consuming and not very interesting to watch. Okay, stabilizers are done. Next is to put this onto here and then to put this onto here, get the screws and there's one, two, three, four holes that I need to secure. So gaskets, bump ons wrenches, screws, standoffs. That's what I need right now. You don't really tell you how to do it, but it can't really be that difficult. You know, this will be easy. Take the plate, take the standoff, and just like screw it into each other. Actually, I'm just making this up as I go, because I've done it so many times. And the best thing about this build is that they didn't give you like specific screw shapes that you have to put. Usually it's like the flat screws go on the plate side, the 
circular screws go on the PCB side and that's that's a lot to keep track of. But in this case, they're all flat. It's very, very simple. So the plate's got standoffs now. Put it on top. Up. Then you take the other screws, then go at it from the PCB side, and then just screw it in. So now it's tight. Ta-da! Pretty much ready for switches. Like, that's it. <laughs> that was easy. I've been staring at this for a while. The rotary encoder. I think it's really cool. Instead of a knob, you use this steering wheel. It's a lot of little bags. I like this rotary encoder, steering wheel. It's quite tactile. Very cool. I think it does need you to, to solder these little legs here and this PCB. You just poke everything through and then you have to solder the bits. But other than that, it's really cool. I'm not going to use it because I don't want to solder anything. But I think it's a really cool idea and it's very original. Here are the switches. These are exclusively sold by Novel Keys in the US from what they've told me. These are Cherry MX Nixies, which is a fan favorite of the mechanical keyboards enthusiast space for a long time now. It's got quite the history behind it. Now I don't know too much about the history, so I do have to do a little bit of research, but I know it's old. All right, Nixies come from the 1980s, but these aren't called Nixies. These are called Cherry MX Black Clear Top, and they're basically Nixies, but they're called Cherry MX Black Clear Top, which is an okay name. It's a little bit of a long name. We'll just all call them Nixies, okay? So they're a keyboard switch from the 80s, prized for its typing feel and acoustics. They were only built for a few years. They were super rare and people wanted them. People wanted them to come back and now here we are. They're back. So if you are interested in getting some, use the link down below to go to Novel Keys or wherever your vendor is. The Cherry MX Black Clear Top, Black Bottom, 5 Pin, Black Stem, Milky Top. They are linear and I'm really excited because I am not that old. I wasn't born in the 1980s. Just gonna put them in one at a time. So this board is south facing. Hot swap, PCB is just gonna support it. These are so easy to put in. This is why I like polycarb so much. The plate is just so easy to work with, but the downside is when you put keycaps on and then you take keycaps off, the switches come out with it. Only downside, this might be my keyboard. If I like it, I'm, I'll, I'll probably use it. I've actually been using Razer V2 Deathstalker Pro for a month now, and it's awesome. I'm pretty excited to use this keyboard. Boom, easy. Bring in the case, attaching ribbon cables. Okay, actually it still needs gaskets. Gasket socks, cute little bag. I like that everybody's been doing this lately. Gasket socks are so easy to put on compared to the gaskets with the 3M on the back that sticks to everything, like your fingers. But these, you just slide on. Right, gaskets got socks, done. Usually that would take like 30 minutes, but gasket socks take like 30 seconds. four feet right here. Boom. Love the black on black look. It's nice. Black on navy. Tune to Choco. Gonna be beautiful. So this is the finished keyboard. I actually love the color scheme. And it's like blue on blue on blue. USB port on the back. Black on navy, looking nice. And it sounds really nice too. These are lighter than blacks. So I absolutely approve. It sounds great. Can't wait to use it. 